Welcome to another session of Digital Forensics and Investigation. In this session, we will be discussing SIM cards. We will see what is a SIM card, what is the structure of the SIM card and its different security features, what type of data is present on the SIM card, what is International Circuit uh, Card Identifier, ICC ID, International Mobile Subscriber Identifier, and also mobile station international subscriber directory number which is msistn and why they are important in the digital investigations so the sim which is subscriber identity module is the fundamental component of a mobile device it is also known as integrated circuit card icc which is a microcontroller based access module it is a physical entity and it can be uh, either a subscriber identity module, SIM, or universal integrated circuit card, UICC. So a SIM can be removed from a cellular handset and inserted into another uh, mobile device. And it allows users to port identity, personal information, and service between different devices. All mobile phones are expected to have some type of identity module. So basically, the ICC deployed for the 2G networks was called a SIM. And the UICC smart cards runs a universal subscriber identity module, which is known as USIM application. So the UICC card accepts only 3G universal mobile telecommunication service, also known as UMTS commands. So USIMs are the enhanced versions of the present day SIM cards, which contains backward compatible informations. A USIM has a unique feature and that is it allows one phone to have multiple numbers. So the first SIM card was about the size of a credit card. But as the technology develops, the cell phone begins to shrink in size and also the SIM cards. So the mini SIM card, which is now what is known as a standard SIM card, is about one third of the size of the credit card. But today, we are using smartphones that uses micro SIMs, so which is smaller than the mini SIM or the standard SIMs. So these SIM card varies in size, but all have the functionality for both identifications and authentications of the subscriber phone of its uh, to its network, and all contain storage for the phone numbers, SMS, and other informations, and also allows uh, for the creation of application on the uh, on the card itself. So a SIM card contains a processor and operating system with 16 to 256 kilobyte of persistence, electronically erasable and programmable read-only memory, also known as EEPROM. It also contains RAM, which is a random access memory, and ROM, which is a read-only memory. So RAM controls the program execution flow, and ROM controls the operating system workflow user authentication, data encryption algorithm, and also other applications. The file systems of the SIM resides in the persistent memory and stores data such as uh, name, phone number, text messages, and network service settings. So depending on the phone used, some information on the SIM uh, may coexist uh, in the memory of the phone as well. So the information may reside entirely in the memory of the phone instead of the available memory on the SIM card. So the file system <coughs> uh, uh, resides in, 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 the, in the EE prom. So there are different type of file system, basically three different types of file system, like master file, uh, dedicated files, and elementary files. So master file is MF, the dedicated files is represented by DF and elementary files are represented by EF. So the master file is the root of the file system and dedicated files are the subordinate uh, ordinate, uh, directories of the master file. And elementary files contains various types of data. Um, for example, the sequence of the data bytes or the sequence of the fixed size records, etc. As you can see in the figure, dedicated files are the subordinate directories under the master file. And there are three different type of the uh, dedicated file directories, like uh, GSM, telecom, and 
DCS 1800. EF, which is elementary file, also resides under the master file and holds the integrated circuit card identity, which is ICC ID. But the subordinate to each of the DF files are the supporting uh, elementary files, which is known as EF, which contains actual data. So the EF file, which are the subordinate of the DF files, contains actual data. Actual data. So the EF files under the DF DCS1800 and DF GSM contains network-related informations. And the EF file under the uh, DF Telecom contains service-related information. So all the files have header, but only the EF file contains data. The first byte of every header identifies the file type and the header contains the information related to the structure of the file. The body of the EF file contains information related to the applications. So the files can be either administrative or application specific and access to store the data in a controlled uh, is controlled by the uh, operating system. Okay. So SIM cards have a built-in security features and the three file types, which we just discussed, like master file, dedicated file, and elementary files, contain the security attributes. These security features filters every executions and allow only those with the proper authorization to access a requested functionality. And there are different level of access conditions in the DF and EF files, dedicated files and uh, elementary files. For example, the access level is always, there is one condition always. So this condition allows uh, allow to access the files, uh, files without any restrictions. We have another condition like card holder verification one, CHV1. So this condition allows access to the files after successful verification of user pin one, or if the user pin one is disabled. We have another uh, conditions like uh, card holder verification to CHV2. So these conditions allow access to the files after successful verification of user pin 2 or if the user pin 2 verification is disabled. Then we have administrative condition. So the card issuer who provides SIM to the subscriber can access only after prescribed requirement for the administrative access are fulfilled. Then we have the never condition. So access to the files over SIM or the mobile equipment interface is completely forbidden. So these are the three different level of uh, conditions, security conditions that, are, that can, can be applied to a SIM card. So the SIM operating system controls access to the, uh, to the element of the file system based on its access conditions and the type of the action being attempted. So the operating systems allows uh, only the limited number of attempts, usually three attempts, to enter uh, the correct uh, card holder verification number before further attempts are being uh, are blocked. So for unblocking, it requires pin unblocking key, also known as PUC, P -U -C, which resets the uh, card holder verification uh, attempt counter. If the subscriber is known, then this uh, the uh, the unblock chv1 and chv2 can be easily provided by the service provider okay so the same card contains sensitive information uh, about the subscriber about the network about the uh, device so data such as uh, contact list and the messages can be stored in the same so same cards themselves contain uh, a repository of data and information for example as i said uh, it contains the inter integrated circuit card identifier, ICC ID, international mobile subscriber identity, in, also known as IMSI, service provider name, mobile country code, mobile country uh, network code, um, mobile subscriber identification, uh, identification number, MSIN, mobile station international subs, uh, subscriber directory number, MSISDN, also the abbreviated dialing number ADN and last dial numbers and short uh, message service which is known as SMS language preferences cardholder verification CHV1 CHV2 cipher keying 
साइफर की सीक्वेंस नंबर इमरजेंसी कॉल कोड फिक्स डायल नंबर सर्विस डायल नंबर लोकल एरिया आइडेंटिटी विच इज ऑन एल आई टेम्परेरी मोबाइल सब्सक्राइबर आइडेंटिटी विच इज टी एम एस आई ओन डायलिंग नंबर एंड रूटिंग इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑफ ऑन द नेटवर्क so these data have the forensic values and can be extracted from the elementary files uh, available on the same okay so the in integrated circuit card identification is a unique identifier for the same and that can be uh, up to a 20 digits long usually 90 sometime it is 19 digit uh, in length and sometime it is 20 digit in length it consists of the industry identifier prefix followed by the country code network identifier number and individual account identification number so 19 digit icc id have additional checksum digit which is at the end of this uh, of this sequence so example of the interpretation of a hypothetical 19 digit icc uh, icc id is shown on this uh, slide so the issuer identifier number which is known as iin that is a combination of three diff three parts of this icc id the industry identifier country code and network identifier so these three parts combine to form issuer uh, issuer identification number iin and its maximum length is seven digits it cannot be more than seven digits so these three parts collectively can be up to seven digits so the first two digits are the are fixed and make up the industry identifiers so in this case we have 89 and 89 refers to the telecommunication industry the next two or three digits refer to the mobile country code so which is also known as mcc and this is defined by the itu recommendations here in this example we have 44 which is which represents uh, united kingdom country code the next one to four digits refers to the mobile network code which is MS, mnc so this is a fixed number for the country or world zone and in this case 11 refers to the operator o2 individual account information is variable in that and every number under one iin has the same number of digits okay the check digit which is the last digit is computed from the other 18 digit using the uh, learn algorithm okay next we have international mobile subscriber identity so international mobile subscriber identity is a unique 15 digit number provided to the subscriber it has a similar structure to the icc id and consists of uh, three different uh, parts like mobile country code mobile network code and mobile subs uh, subscription identification numbers so mcc mnc and uh, msin so as an example of interpreting a hypothetical 15 digit mc number is shown on this slide so it is 2343981049232 so the mcc is the first three digits identifies the country so here 234 refers to uk then we have next two digits or three digits for example two digits is for the european standard and three digits is actually the north american standards identifies the operator so in this example 33 uh, refers to orange uk communication then we have uh, msin so the next remaining digits identify the mobile unit within the gsm network okay then we have the mobile station international subscriber directory number and it is intended to convey the telephone numbers Uh, assigned to the subscriber for receiving calls on the mobile set an example of the uh, msisdn format is uh, shown in, the, in on this slide as you can see the number so the country code can be up to three digits then we have the national destination code ndc and that can be uh, two to three digits long and then we have subscriber number 
and the length maximum length of the subscriber number is 10 digits so in this example but the overall length of the MSISDN cannot be more than 15 digits. So the maximum length of the of the MSISDN is 15 digits. Now, in this uh, um, slide, you can see that the restriction is on the subscriber number. That the subscriber number maximum length is 10 digits. It cannot be more than 10 digits. But the country code length could be two to three digits and the uh, national destination code could be two to three or sometime it is four digits if the whole length of all field combining all field is not more than 15 digits so in this example you can see that the country code is 44 which represents uk then we have the national destination code which is 7826 so that uh, represents the provider so in this case it's a vodafone and then we have the subscriber uh, number so which is a telephone number and that is represented as one two three four five six in this case but it can be up to 10 digits as long as the whole length of the msisdn is not exceeding 15 uh, digits the last thing is the sms uh, which which uh, can be stored on the on the sim card so messaging is a communication medium by which the text is entered uh, on one cell phone and delivered by the mobile network and uh, uh, the short message services contains the text and also the associated parameters for the message so the sms entries contains other informations besides the text uh, itself such as uh, the time of the incoming message was sent and uh, as recorded by the uh, mobile phone network the sender phone number the SMS center number address. So an SMS uh, is actually limited to a maximum of 160 characters. So longer messages are usually broken into uh, broken down by the sender phone into pieces and reassembled by the receiving phone. So when SMS on the SIM card or U-SIM card is deleted, so the message status flag is changed to indicate that the message is no longer required. However, the content of the message is typically left intact. So the message is only overwritten when the space is required for a new SMS. So the deleted SMS may be retrieved by accessing SIM via a SIM card reader. So each SIM message has a maximum length as I mentioned is 160. So you can use the SIM extraction technique to extract the information from the, from the SIM card. So most of the smartphones nowadays, uh, they don't require a SIM card to be present in the in the mobile phone when doing uh, a mobile uh, mobile phone uh, extraction. But it is still always a good practice to read SIM card as it will have some important information like ICC ID, MZ number, which are uh, digitally stored on, on on the SIM card and may contain user data associated with the previous. Uh, handset in uh, or the mobile phone informations. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this uh, session. Thank you very much.